is Up Close, I'm Stephen I. Weiss. The website Jezebel has become famous for its novel takes on feminism and coverage of women. The philosophy of that site has now been concentrated into a book that's an encyclopedia of sorts on today's American women's experience, The Book of Jezebel. I interview the site's founding editor and the book's editor, Anna Holmes. But speaking about new women's experiences, there's nothing newer than a newborn baby. And where traditionally American Jewish families had only produced rituals for welcoming new Jewish baby boys into the world, a growing effort now seeks to have a similar experience for new Jewish baby girls. I interview Sharon Siegel, author of A Jewish Ceremony for Newborn Girls. But first, here's my interview with Anna Holmes. One of the things, that if there's a theme to Jezebel.com, the site, if there's a theme to the Book of Jezebel, this idea that, that so frequently uh, women's issues or women's concerns are addressed in this kind of flippant manner. The genesis of the site and, and what you'll see on the site and what you'll see in the book is a kind of push back against uh, things that women have traditionally been valued for, which is like their appearance, their sexuality, their fertility, you know, whether they are mothers. That's the way that the media, uh, women's media had, had traditionally presented um, women's interests as being kind of that myopic and, and, and narrow when in fact it's a lot broader. So you'll, 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 you'll see references to things that you know one would consider superficial, I suppose, um, in the book or on the site, but you'll also see references to, to um, historical figures and, and politics in general and you know pop culture. It's interesting, for example, when, when looking through the book, and, and obviously there are a great many entries within it. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of an encyclopedia of, yeah. I, I don't know, your, <laughs> your like view, your, your, yeah. your yeah. site sensibility. Yeah. And then one of the things that's constantly running through my head is, well, what got left out? Oh, you, you know? so many things got left out. Um, some things got left out because I didn't think of them. I mean, I literally, like, they just didn't cross my mind. And some things got left out because we didn't have room. But um, one of the things I knew when the book came out was that people were going to hopefully like it, but also point out the things that we'd missed, things or people that we'd missed, which they have. And I've been making a list. <laughs> um, right, but what about what, what's consciously removed? What's consciously oh, what's outside consciously, the sphere of what's Jezebel? What's consciously removed? Um, like, what are the kinds of things that when you talk about it, you go, you know what, that's just not what we're about? Well, <laughs> um, a couple of things. Uh, and, and, and this is really more about when I was running the site, uh, and I think that it translates into the book, but um, there were certain things I was not really interested in talking about on the site. I was not really interested in talking about um, the Republican or right-wing point of view. <laughs> the site was very um, unapologetically progressive, you can call it liberal, uh, pro-choice, so I was not interested in presenting um, opposing views about, let's say, abortion rights or reproductive justice. Um, I wasn't really interested in, in, in presenting oppos opposing views with regards to the political system, or at least kind of the ways that we lean. Um, I wasn't that particularly interested in featuring male point of views that often, like I didn't have any male writers, because I felt that you could get the male point of view pretty much anywhere else, um, on the internet or in print, um, and that you know, we were, I, the, the site was not designed to have um, fair and balanced debates about certain issues that we felt were um, non-negotiable. For example, abortion. And, but within the politics of the book itself, it's interesting to see, I, I was trying to figure out if there is a consistent political thread. Uh, certainly on choice, there's a very clear, mm -hmm. uh, a very clear statement. But trying to find any kind of broader politics mm -hmm. or any kind of, of broader uh, advocacy. Mm -hmm. I think the the really the main thing that came up as as the the second most uh, uh, concerning issue was was race and mm -hmm. race equality. Mm -hmm. Well, I I tried to imbue the site with some discussion of of race because I didn't feel that it was being talked about that much in other media. I am myself black. Um, I did not see discussions of of. African Americans or other people of color really going on in mainstream media, and I really hesitate to say that the site was mainstream media. I mean, it's it's much bigger now than it was when I ran it, but at the time, I, I would I would say it was kind of um, alternative. Um, well, it still is, I think. Yeah, in a lot of yeah, ways, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's not the New York Times, um, uh, but you're right that there isn't necessarily one um, ideology, for lack of a better word, being put forth. But that's because the site and the book. W were always collaborative. You know, there was a period of time in the beginning after the site launched when I briefly flirted with the idea of trying to um, rein in the writers 
in, in, in such a way that that there would there would be a, a cohesive and totally coherent specific ideology being put forth. But that's not the way that they were. That's not the way that we were. I mean, we all had kind of different opinions about things. And I, and actually, the more honest approach, which is the one that we took, would was to let them have their say in whatever way they wanted. And now, a Jewish ceremony for newborn girls author, Sharon Siegel. You have three girls and one boy. I do. For your girls, you did a ceremony that looked like what? It paralleled the circumcision ceremony with the obvious exception of the Circumcision Act itself. Um, it most importantly included what I would call an active covenantal ritual, um, which the one that that we used was swaddling um, my daughter in a talit. Um, it was particularly um, special using the talit of my husband, um, which had been his father's. And swaddling the, um, the child in the talit represented for us her initiation into the Jewish covenant. What are some of the, the most interesting or fascinating uh, ideas that you found in all the Jewish literature, because you, you went back quite a ways. I did. One of the favorite discoveries was from actually not so long ago. It was a, a big controversy, at least in writing, between practitioners of a more progressive type of Judaism in the 1970s, uh, as opposed to more, let's call them traditionalists. And there was a very vociferous discussion in the Shema journal in the early 1970s between Michael and Sharon Strassfeld, who were advocates for a more progressive type of Judaism, and Judith Bleich, who was the traditionalist. And they argued, they argued for really what is, where is Judaism going? Should it be looking to more progressive forms, or should it be trying to stay where it's been? And the, the language is so heated it's, it's almost amazing. I had to read it a bunch of times. I, I sort of couldn't believe it. But in a sense, that same discussion is going on many deca decades later, and it, it's quite interesting to see how it plays out in different arenas today. Right, and at the same time, you found ideas going back much further of, of what people would do. And, and they, people have been innovating in this realm for centuries. They have, and a lot of changes have happened also. Probably my favorite ritual that I uncovered is called the Holocreich. Um, I think that's the right pronunciation. It is an amazing folk ritual that happened in Germany for about 900 years up until the eve of the Holocaust. It is a cradle ceremony where a baby, either boy or girl, is introduced to their cradle and it happens in the home. And the entire family is there as well as all the neighborhood children and the child is lifted up by all the neighborhood children and they call out, hola, 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 what shall the baby be called? It's like this amazing moment. And then either one of the parents, or sometimes if there's an officiant, would call out the baby's name. <laughs> and then he or she would be placed in the cradle, the children got treats. It was really, seemingly, since I never witnessed it, a, a really lovely ritual. And for me, one of the most interesting and exciting things about it is that it was done in my own family. For a, a lot of people would, would, and a lot of people out there who've been given the possibility uh, of doing something for daughters said, well, why bother? You know, why, it doesn't speak any less to my daughter that I don't have this ritual. But why did you feel particularly compelled to say, that's, that's not the way I see things? I think it's very important to mark the entry of every Jewish daughter into the covenant. I think both in terms of the importance of introducing her into the community in a formal way, as well as from a particularly religious perspective. All Jewish boys, girls, men and women were all members of the covenant. And um, as I show in the book, the halachic sources and other sources speak to that important point. And I think it's particularly important to ritualize it, to bring in the community into your home or sometimes into your synagogue, and to really make a strong statement and say, my son is part of the covenant, my daughter is part of the covenant.
That's all for this week's abbreviated web episode of Up Close. A reminder, you can see the full episode of Up Close on the Jewish channel on cable or listen to the full audio of the show as a podcast available on iTunes and your favorite podcast player. Jewish channel is available on cable. Time Warner Cable Channel 528, IO Optimum Channel 505, RCN Channel 268, Bright House Channel 330, Verizon Fios Channel 900, Cox Cable Channel 1, Frontier Communications, and on Comcast in the on-demand menu under premium channels. For more information, visit TJCTV.com.